Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Eshell. Eshell is the newest mage in Smite and focuses on medium range and damage, but with very spammy abilities, with some utility on top. It was claimed that she'd be a good soul laner too, but I've never seen her out of the mid lane, so that's where I think she'll be staying for now. Her builds are nothing out of the ordinary. She goes to typical mage build with a higher propensity for cooldown reduction items. She has some funky abilities, but that doesn't necessarily mean she builds funky items. Just going a generic mage build will suit her just fine. Relics wise, it's the same sort of story. Just beads and ages, nothing too special going on here. And finally, your shard, yeah, just horn shard. Let's get into something a little more interesting with this shell's passive. Each time each shell deals damage to an enemy or applies a buff to an ally, she will gain a stack on her passive. At 6 stacks, her next basic attack will have no basic attack movement speed penalty and will deal significantly more damage, and strike in an AoE. As I mentioned already, Eshell is all about spamming abilities, so this passive fits her like a glove. On that same note though, this means that you don't need to stick your neck out just to fire off this passive onto an enemy god. It does a lot of damage, sure, but you don't really have to go out of your way to hit it. Really what you want to do with this passive is be crafty and plan out when the passive is going to come out in your combo, a bit like Susano in that regard. Remember, she gets passive stacks for dealing both damage and affecting allies, including herself, with abilities, so there's a lot of little ways you can get your passive in the middle of a combo. Let's check some of them out by looking at her first ability, which has two parts. Each shell fires out a projectile which goes through walls and minions, but will stop on gods. It deals low damage, but the ability will deal 40% bonus damage to minions and jungle monsters. If each shell hits an enemy god with this ability, she will gain access to another version of her one. This version of the ability fires in a triangle AoE, meaning it gets smaller the longer the range gets, and this version of the ability goes through minions, walls, and gods this time. Enemy gods who are looking at the triangle when it fires are blinded for one second, and trust me this is very hard to avoid from the enemy's point of view, so it'll come up in combos later. The tip of this triangle AoE also deals bonus damage, and this entire second portion of the ability also deals more damage overall than the original projectile did. First important tidbit about this ability is that Ishel can walk during casting of both versions of the ability, so already solid range on both versions is actually a bit longer than it seems. Secondly, understanding the timing of these abilities, and frankly all of Ishel's abilities, is key. They do both have a minor delay between when you press the ability button and when the ability actually fires. And where you're aiming at when the ability ultimately fires, not when you press the ability button, is what counts. So be sure to keep aiming your camera until the last moment for optimal aiming. And finally, the big question. When should you look for the first version of the ability on an enemy god to get that sweet second version? Really, it depends on the range of your opponent. If they can trade with you or can't even try to hit you back versus the range of the first version of your one, you should absolutely look to tag your lane opponent with this ability and then clear the wave with the second version of your first ability. This is good against gods like Morgan Le Fay, Anubis, Giannis, gods who maybe can hit you back but at the very least have to eat your first ability first. Against gods of more range like Thoth, Hell, Agni, who can just clear the wave without entering your range or can punish you heavily for trying to poke it, just use your first ability for wave clear. Other than that, this ability really is just as simple as looking at your enemies and pressing one for some damage. Spacing yourself for the bonus damage on the second part of the one is good too, but not necessary. If someone gets CC'd by a teammate, just mashing one is as complex as it gets with this ability when fighting enemy gods. Although, as the game gets later, you're going to really need to hit the tip of the second version of your one on an enemy to have a real impact as you shall. Since it does bonus percent damage, it can end up dealing more than double the damage of the first version as the game gets later. Luckily, Eshel has some CC of her own to set up for this spammage. In her second ability, Eshel winds up and fires a circle AoE. This circle AoE damages and knocks up any enemy gods, and heals any allies within the AoE. It can be fired over walls, and with no limit on how many enemies or allies can be affected. And remember, you can heal yourself or an ally while knocking up an enemy for two passive stacks. More importantly though, this ability works perfectly as self peel, wave clear, poke, self setup, and sustain for your team during fights. It covers a ton of options, but the one thing holding it back is that wind up time. It's not long or anything, and it is very easy to learn, so comboing it with her first ability is easy once you get the timing down. This does however mean that using it in clutch situations, like when you need to peel for yourself or heal a teammate in a tight situation, it can sometimes completely fail for you. The healing one is easy to explain. Even if you react at light speed, sometimes the heal just doesn't come out fast enough. However, when it comes to peeling for yourself and your team, you can place the two in such a way that you can leave your opponents no choice but to be hit by it or stop chasing. And if you can, don't get greedy and try to heal both yourself and hit the enemy. Hitting the enemy is the most important thing to do with this ability when trying to create some distance. This, again like our first ability, is something you want to be using all the time for some poke and potential for a kill. I mean, really, once her items come online, Eshell can easily do 3 quarters of a target's life bar with her second ability in both versions of her first. 
And again, like her first ability, you can move freely while casting, so you can easily adjust yourself to catch the heal or try to force the enemy into the two if they're chasing you. Of course, since this ability has peel and a heal attached to it, you shouldn't be too trigger happy with it, right? Well luckily, Ishiel has her third ability to once again peel for herself and set herself up for some damage. Ishiel gains movement speed and fires a circle AoE which lands after a short delay, which she can fire over walls. Upon landing, it disperses 8 orbs in all 8 directions which she can bounce off of walls. Upon colliding with an ally or Ishiel herself, these orbs will grant 20% movement speed, and each individual orb can gain multiple passive stacks for Ishiel. So when your team's in a pinch, skip trying to use this on the enemy and just plop it on top of yourself and your team to help them escape. However, you do want to use this on enemies frequently though, since when the original projectile collides with an enemy, she heavily damages and roots them. And yes, as usual, you can move freely while casting it, so in situations where you want to rely on the movement speed, like when being aggressive or running away, you can move towards where it'll land to more quickly guarantee yourself an orb. Once again, a tool that's good for self heal as it is for setup. This ability leads to her longest and highest damaging combos too, but there's some things to keep in mind. First off, keep diminishing returns in mind here. You can 3, 2, 1, but you don't really want to 2, 3, 1, since the knockup will put DR on the target and make the brute last for a shorter time. Not to mention that, despite another delay on the cast time, this ability is extremely easy to hit thanks to the size. And remember, like her second ability, this cannot be body blocked whatsoever, as so you can easily chuck it into the middle of teamfights for very potent range CC. Of course again, following it up with your knockup if it's safe to do so. And if the enemy is too slippery, remember that her 1 has two versions, so you can CC, 1, then have them use their movement ability to get away from you, then CC, 1 again. In this case, you want to start with your third ability so you can get some movement speed to chase them after they use their movement ability, so you can guarantee follow up with your second ability and into your first ability's second version for some insane damage. If all of this ends up being unsafe, you can use your ultimate as the last line of both defense and offense to keep yourself in play. He shall become CC immune and begins firing a long range beam in front of her, and this beam passes through all walls and gods. This beam deals ramping damage to enemy gods and heals allied gods every 0.25 seconds and lasts for 3 seconds, and Ishel will always be at maximum passive stacks when the ability ends. However, Ishel can extend the time of this ability by healing allies and damaging enemies at the same time. And keep in mind too that Ishel will be healed anytime she heals an ally with this ability as well. So in theory, you want to hit both an ally and an enemy at the same time for maximum effectiveness. This obviously won't happen very often, so don't try to force it, but also never forget that healing allies while damaging enemies lets you extend the time further. That's only once in a while though. Usually, you use this ability in one of two ways. For one, when you use it for damage, you really only want to use it in this way when the rest of your core kit is down or is already being casted, since remember, on all of Ishael's abilities, you can begin using other abilities as well as move while they cast, and that's no different with this ability. So for instance, you can 2 one, one someone, and as the second one is coming out, pop the ultimate to begin chasing them. In short, what I'm trying to say is, when you see a good opportunity to use your ultimate, as in a time you need to do high area damage without the risk of getting CC'd, you almost always want to use one ability before using the ultimate, usually your 2 or your 3, but the second version of your 1 works as well if you have it, with the 3 being especially good thanks to the bonus movement speed. This is mostly down to the fact that the ultimate, eh, it's not like it's bad, it's just the damage isn't really worth how long it takes to come out. A lot can happen in those 3 seconds, an Aegis, a movement ability, a relic like shell, a meditation, and so on can all nullify the ability, and since it takes so long to deal its damage, it means that the enemy will always has time to react to it in some sort of way, whether that's in the defensive ways I just mentioned, or just by straight up killing each shell as she's casting her ultimate. Hunters are especially good at this, easily out her ultimate's damage. So certainly use this ability for damage, but keep in mind that her core kit is really what's effective for damage. That second use case is where the ultimate tends to shine a bit more, no pun intended. It's exceptionally good at saving Ishel and her allies from bad situations. This plus her third ability of course makes for good aggression, but it makes for great defense as well. Complete CC immunity for 3 seconds plus the heal for her allies which cannot be body blocked can save Ishel and her allies from a lot of bad situations. So really, this ultimate is more of a last resort, unlike most mage ultimates. With most mage ultimates you need to plop them into team fights, but with Ishelis you can use it in the more extreme moments in a reactive way. If the fight's going well and you need to easy chase down or need to confirm a kill, use this ability, since again it's completely unavoidable damage as long as they're in range. And secondly, if the fight goes badly, say someone gets hard CC'd or takes a lot of damage and is about to be dove onto, use this ability to both heal them and yourself from impending doom. And even better, when you're using it on an ally, you're more likely to catch an enemy with it too and extend the duration. In short, this ability is absolutely one you want to use in fights, but her core kit is really what she wants to focus on for both CC and damage. Let's put that to use with some combos. 1, 2, 1. 2, 1, 1. 
One, three, one. Three, one, one. One, three, ult. Two, one, one, ult. One, three, one, ult. Passive basic attack, two, one, one. For ability leveling, you want your one at level one, your two at level two, and your three at level three. From there, you max your one, your two, then your three, leveling the ultimate whenever you can. Ishel is one of the most fun gods in recent memory. She always has an answer for what the enemy wants to do, and an Ishel who can consistently hit her second and third abilities is going to be one that's extremely hard to play against. As a result, however, her ultimate is, um, well, let's be nice here, it's not great. Most mage ultimates deal the same or more damage much faster if not instantly, and Ishel gives her opponents all the time in the world to try and counter it. The healing portion too is overshadowed by what other mages can bring to the table. Hell, Chunga, and even Aphrodite, while not healing for more potentially, do so more quickly, which, just like dealing damage, is the most important thing when you're healing in the middle of a teamfight. And going back to the whole Ishel being able to hit her 2 and 3 consistently, against gods with exceptionally safe wave clear or against teams that want to focus more on late game and not fighting you in the early and mid game, Ishel can suffer since her strength is more in that early to mid game when she's able to spam her abilities without, you know, dying immediately. She still has more than enough up her sleeve to be effective late game though. She's one of those gods where you need to get in there and get your hands dirty a bit, and rely on good usage of your beads and ages as well as your ultimate to be effective out of the laning phase. That's about all I have on Ishel for now. Thanks for watching.